family. My name is Vicki Dillard, and thank you so much for tuning in to this amazing network, African Diaspora News Channel. Please, as you come in, be sure to like and to share this podcast. Listen, dear family. You know, I'm going to always keep it real with you and give us our war briefing. You understand that the black man and woman are involved, engaged in a war, not because we've declared war on a group of people, but because it's been declared on us for hundreds of years. And that system, that religion and that government that is universal is white supremacy. And it's reaching an inflection point. It's reaching such an inflection point that we are once again taking to the streets and resisting oppression. And what inspires these incidents of black resistance to injustice against us? Such incidences like the one that I want you to see right now regarding a teenage black boy and a white supremacist cop and a standby, another quote unquote man of color cop standing by and assisting. A recent report came out from Trump's own administration acknowledging the fact, a whistleblower stated that Trump's administrative uh, administration officials would penalize and also discourage folks from telling the truth about the threat of white supremacy. And they stated that it is the greatest threat in terms of terrorism, which we knew. We as a people know that, but some in his administration are actually admitting it. And one of the reasons why, in my opinion, that folk in Trump's administration are admitting, uh, they're admitting it is because those that are in law enforcement, they're having to try to contend with white supremacists that they don't know what their next moves are. They're unpredictable. So when you've got, there's a hierarchy of white supremacy. And when those that are on the lower rung of white supremacy aren't in communication, with those that are at the top of white supremacy. And if white supremacy at the top, if they have a plan and if they're trying to exploit and take advantage of us in different ways and they feel like the bottom rung of white supremacy is interfering with that, they're going to sound the alarm to rein them in. It's not because they both don't suffer from anti-black racism. Let's be clear. It's because they're violating the chain of command in white supremacy and they don't know how far and they don't know the official goings on of the lower rung of the white supremacist. So they're sounding the alarm so that they can try to control it and gain and extract as much black excellence, creativity and resources out of us as possible. See, those that are on the lower rung of white supremacy, they're in, in the white in, in the in the order of in the hierarchy of white supremacy in the chain of command command of white supremacy they're 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 uh being reckless with their anti-black racism because the people at the top they know that if you work with certain black folk if you give certain bootlegs jobs give them let get let them be on on mainstream white mainstream television if you give them a little you know little contract or something little sponsorship or something to throw them out for a loop and they can still exploit them not just wholesale get rid of them they want to use them up first before they just get rid of them you feel what i'm saying so the top rung the hierarchy those at the top of, of white supremacy rather they know that there are some other goods that they can pull and extract out of the black person before they just straight up just say let's just get rid of them and the other thing the other problem that those that are on the lower rung of white supremacy the problem that they pose for those at the top of white supremacy is that their blatant and reckless white supremacy is, is going to expose all of white supremacy sooner or later. That's the reason why Donald Trump's administration, which is a very racist and openly racist administration, that's the reason why some behind the scenes are blowing the whistle. 
they're trying to get it under control so that those that are at the lower part of the total pole don't, don't mess up what all those at the top of white supremacy is trying to do. With that being said, another such incident that keeps sparking black resistance and that keeps further exposing the reality and the depth of the problem of white supremacy is that video that you just saw of this ridiculous white supremacist race soldier, Neil Pizzo, a Sarasota County deputy. The surveillance footage as you just saw showed that young black man, Mr. Reed, his name is Terrence Devon Reed III. He was sitting on a bench with his arms tucked in his shirt. And then you see Rizzo, that race soldier, that pig, walk toward him, stand up. You saw Reed, rather, stand up. And then you saw Reed take his arms out and the deputy immediately goes for his throat. The fact that he immediately tried to choke out this child tells you everything you need to know about the very real predicament that Black folk are in. And the patience with which we have with this murder is astounding. You are willing to give up and martyr the lives of your babies by keeping them in such systems, by us not getting serious about teaching our own children, our own babies, by us not getting serious enough to do for ourselves and make our own neighborhoods safe and decent places, by policing our own selves, by strategizing with other members of the black diaspora so that we can get a plan going. Uh, uh, concerning the future of black America. We've got to take this serious and the patience that we have with this is really betrayal to our children. This young man is the seed it's our seed. It's black seed. Who are we to be patient for another year after waiting 465 years for justice? Who are we to continue to be patient with murder and injustice and human rights violations? Who are we to want to continue to be a part of a system that doesn't even want you? that abuses you, that doesn't make any sense. After he immediately chokes, uh, goes for his throat to choke him. You see that the struggle ensues before Pizzo, the white supremacist, throws him to the ground. But you don't see that baby fighting back, hardly. How can he? And then that other deputy j jumps his funny looking self and to wrangle him, wrangle his feet. Let me tell you something. Those of you Negroes that's out there talking about that you are blue, that you black and blue, like that Renee Hall, the chief of police that's stepping down now in Dallas. Remember, she was on the record talking about she, she her, about her dual identity. She said she's black and blue. Girl, if you don't go sit your funny looking self down, somebody talk black to me. What do you mean you're black and blue? Not when we're seeing case after case after case, incident after incident after incident of race soldiers embedded all throughout law enforcement throughout this country on a federal level, on a state level, on a local level, and in the military. We're at an inflection point. You don't get to go around here and talk about because, you know, Billy Bob and Charlie went to your child's, you know, eighth grade dance. That does not count right now. We believe in not being the aggressor first. We believe in following rules and being moral and upstanding. But you do not allow someone to murder you and take you out and violate your human rights. That's a shame. And that's a sign of a dead people. 
And for those of you that are in law enforcement, those in the military, you know, we would not promote you doing anything or violating any rules or regulations like that. But the wisdom and the training that you received in the military, those traits are transferable to being a benefit to your people. You understand what I'm saying. It's time for you to come home. It's time for you to all the stuff that you gave to this oppressive system, their militaries, their schools, their, 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 their companies, their industries, their governments, their religions. It's time for you to use that for your own. And finally, what kind of retraining would have fixed what, what you just saw Pizzo do? What kind of de-escalating training would he need to go to? See, the problem with us lying saying that all police officers need is, a new, is new training is ridiculous because you see case after case and situation after situation where white officers know exactly what to do when it's a white person. White people try to kill other white police officers and they make it just fine. Dylan Rue, the one they, made, they said was responsible for the murder of our nine black parishioners at Mother Emanuel's church. They, he was, he fled. They knew that they, they were looking at a serial killer because he murdered so many people. And they managed to take him in without a hitch and drop him off and gave him something to eat at Burger King. You keep seeing other footage of white supremacists that are beating up the police, knock them down, take their weapons from them, jump in their cruisers, and they still take them into, the, into custody without a scratch. So they know exactly what to do in that incident. It is clear that they have no love for us. And this is yet again, another case, another opportunity for us to get serious and to move with urgency, with alacrity on behalf of your own people. That's what's just, that's what's right. That is the moral thing to do for the survival of our own people. Thank you so much for tuning into this amazing network. Please make sure that you like again, that you share and make sure family that you sign up for my weekly mastermind where each week on Wednesday nights, um, I'm live and direct with you at clubvicky.com. We still have a special going on for $1 for the first month. Again, that's clubvicky.com. The link will be in the chat. And I'm dropping a spiritual jewel each week and you get to ask me questions and I elaborate on it. And it's been amazing. The testimonials, the feedback has been just mwah, a blessing. So you don't want to miss that. And also make sure that you follow me on Instagram at Vicky X Dillard. Follow me on Instagram at Vicky X Dillard and on my Facebook fan page at Vicky Dillard. I love you. Mwah.